The officer that murdered George Floyd, Derek Chauvin, has been found guilty, guilty, guilty. And that's not me doing it for effect, right? He was found guilty on all three charges of second and third degree murder and manslaughter. Now, this is a decisive win for everyone that's a part of the Black Lives Matter and to fund the police movements, but the fight for true justice continues. And before we go on, it is important to note that I'm not chastising or criticizing any celebration of this verdict. For the true left, this is a glimmer of hope in an otherwise dark corridor. But let's not forget that this victory was achieved by the activists, journalists, artists that created and amplified this movement. And not because Nancy Pelosi yelled Wakanda forever at the rotunda. And that's one of the major pieces of propaganda we're about to see. The Democrats are about to co-opt this victory for the party, despite being the party that boldly said that they would not defund the police right after they posed for a photo with some Black Lives Matter activists and protesters. The, the platitudes offered here will be the talking point for the upcoming elections, and don't forget that the Democrats are a capitalist party which needs the police force to protect their stuff. In moments after the verdict, corporate media fawned over the empty words of politicians like Amy Klobuchar and Nancy Pelosi. Look, as far as I see it, Amy Klobuchar should be in prison for contributing to the death of Floyd. As a DA, she overlooked Chauvin's record of brutalizing and killing others in Minneapolis for two decades. Her opinions in this matter are the equivalent of Ted Bundy's opinion on feminism. Nancy Pelosi claimed that George Floyd sacrificed, well, uh, he sacrificed his life in the name of justice. Yeah, her statement makes Floyd a martyr who died on purpose instead of a victim of a horrific crime committed by a sociopathic killer cop. The folks that defend Pelosi claim that she's old and we should just leave her be. You know, she means well. Look, if she is too old and senile, then she shouldn't be in public office making laws for the people. Those are going to be insane laws. She should be at home watching Matlock reruns and drinking prune juice like every other elderly person in America. And, look, at its most innocent, it's an out-of-touch, drunken slip of the tongue. But I very much doubt it, right? Nancy Pelosi is the opposite of innocent. She's so much its opposite that she has gotten rid of that word from every dictionary in her ice cream-laden mansion. This is likely an attempt to control the narrative, to claim that martyrdom is justice. And her statement says that the only way we get rid of those pesky, rotten apples out of the upstanding American police system is for black and brown Americans to give up their lives. Their bait for the justice system to suss out the bad cops so the good ones can prevail. Collateral damage for freedom, that's what he was. It's an attempt to normalize police violence. As Democrats take on their digital pilgrimage of platitudes, the Republicans are using uh, different tactics. As of now, there are 34 states that have introduced 81 different anti-protest laws. Now, most of these are to protect pipelines, fracking wells, and fossil fuel companies written by a Koch-funded group called ALEC. But a new Florida bill pushed by Governor Ron DeSantis is specifically targeting BLM activists and demonstrations. The Florida Anti-Riot Bill, or as I'm calling it, the Dick Santis Bill, criminalizes marches, protests, and demonstrations that would block highways or roads. And to those that are going to rationalize this, just remember that your mild inconvenience doesn't hold up to the gravity of black and brown people getting killed by corrupt cops on a daily basis. The DeSantis bill also criminalizes defacing statues. And this part of the bill is clearly going after the movement that wants to, wants to 
take down statues glorifying racist uh, uh, people from American history. Look, I have a pretty simple rule to deal with all this. Okay, you get till 1864 to put up your racist statues. You can go ahead and call that heritage if that makes you feel good. But beyond that, you're just a dick. And if a graffiti artist lets the world know in neon colors, then so be it. It's far more honest than the placard that was put up there. Now, this bill also penalizes governments for not taking a heavy-handed pr approach to these protests. DeSantis is talking about tear gas, rubber bullets, blowing glitter directly into the eye of every protester, which are all violations of the Geneva Convention, by the way. Especially the glitter one. That glitter one can... They'll, I mean, that you'll never see the light of day if you do something like that. It also vaguely says that there is a six-month sentence for, quote, abusing the police. I'd hardly call it abusive when a water bottle hits an officer in RoboCop armor. That would be like an abusive parent claiming that they were defending themselves by hitting the child that spit up on them. Now, this part of the bill comes directly from Eric Nelson's pathetic attempt to defend Jarek Chauvin. He claimed that Chauvin couldn't do anything because the crowd was being so aggressive and calling him things like a bum. You know, look, if Derek Chauvin goes to a playground, he might become genocidal because a youngling might call him a poo-poo brain. And according to Eric Nelson, it was that child's fault. It was all that child's fault that that child was murdered by Derek Chauvin. You know, that should show that child. He should just be quiet and subservient when there is a lawman around. Now, Nelson's argument was that the, the primarily black crowd was hostile and abusive and now his racist defense will become a law under this law telling an officer to stop killing someone could be considered abusive this is the american gaslight clause of the bill and this bill is likely to spread like a venereal disease out of florida and infect other states too and let's be clear that any law that criminalizes protests and puts corporations and state-funded murderers first is unconstitutional. And anyone pushing laws like this should be removed from office and the country on grounds of treason. Furthermore, corporate media, including liberal ones like CNN, have justified laws like this by demonizing Black Lives Matter protests. Recently, a report came out that said that the homicide rates in the U.S. have gone up. The main blame isn't put on cops that have continuously killed innocent people, but protesters that are trying to put an end to systemic police violence and racism. This CNN's article claimed that homicides were going up because police resources have to be taken away and redistributed to protect things like banks and Starbucks and other buildings from those scary, terrible protesters. I mean... What if a Becky or a Chad or even a Karen start thinking about the problems with police brutality and learn how the cops came from slave patrols instead of how delicious their pumpkin spice latte is? The horror. The horror. Now, the liberal media, alongside Republicans, are actively working to ensure that a mass civil rights movement like the one we saw last summer doesn't happen again. And don't worry, Facebook is in on it too. I mean, before Chauvin's verdict, Facebook decided to censor all political posts involving police brutality. And as a cover for censoring leftists calling to defund and abolish the police, they also said all of the disparaging comments about George Floyd will also be removed. But fear not, racists. YouTube and Twitter will let you post all of the debunked and false racist theories you want. And if you want examples, you can check out my Twitter feed and... Uh, comments on my YouTube videos, cause, cause they're there. Meanwhile, left lefty progressive YouTube channels are being taken down for calling out corruption within the Democratic Party. So Twitter and YouTube are totally fine with false racist claims, but when actual journalism is done, they're gonna go ahead and and remove that content because we don't we don't want those pumpkin spice latte customers to start thinking. 
Look, and this isn't me advocating for the censorship of the right, right? I'm just simply saying that racists peddle fake news about minorities. And if fake news and deceptive practices go against the community standards, then racist stereotypes that have been debunked nonstop should be removed from their platform. But instead, they're likely to target anti-capitalist leftists because those racists need to buy more Coca-Cola, you guys, okay? And cle clearly, none of us are thinking about the bottom line here. At current, the accepted narrative surrounding Chauvin is that he's the rotten apple we've all been talking about. But he is not. Chauvin is only one of the rotten apples. And there are plenty of killer cops out there that have gone free. The killers of Breonna Taylor, Tamir Rice, Freddie Gray, Eric Garner, Mike Brown, Philando Castile, Sandra, Brand, Sandra Bland, and many, many more remain free. Plus, during the trial itself, 64 black people were murdered by the police, like Dante Wright and Adam Toledo. In fact, at the moment of the verdict, a 15-year-old black girl was murdered by the police in Columbus. And if you want to claim that justice has truly been served, start by reversing the verdict on clearly guilty cops that live to kill another day, and ensure that all the other killer cops will be behind bars. In the last decade, only a handful of cops have been convicted guilty, and even in those convictions, you can see the justice system showcase its racism. In Minneapolis, a black officer was shot and killed a white woman. The white woman was humanized as the black cop was given a guilty sentence. Compare that to the demonization of George Floyd and the other black bystanders by Eric Nelson, it shows us how deeply and systemically racist this justice system is. And this is why we have to uproot the system and start anew. If you want true justice, then any defense that includes racial stereotypes to justify murder will no longer be accepted. Eric Nelson's defense was a gamut of racism, from saying Floyd was a drug-addled black man to a big scary black man that was resisting arrest to the black bystanders being so angry, his only defense to the jury was that they should accept his racism. And some Americans do, but racism isn't a defense in proving someone's innocent when they've been videotaped being guilty. Not just that, but the debt of Dante Wright shows us the racial bias police have. Wright wasn't being aggressive, and instead of using her taser, Kimberly Potter automatically reached for her gun. That's because police training tells you that everyone is out to get you, and your life is constantly in danger. Psychologically, cops are trained to kill, not de-escalate, protect, or serve. It is becoming clearer and clearer that the, the justice in America is skewed, corrupt, and broken between capitalist politicians, social media giants, and corporate media fighting back against the system is becoming illegal, proving again that America isn't a democracy, but rather a crypto-fascist oligarchy. But look, we don't have to accept these laws. If we keep pushing back, marching, organizing, amplifying, and educating ourselves to the tactics of the corrupt, then we can make the change we want to see in the world. Just because a law says something doesn't make it right. We decide what laws are just. We put Derek Chauvin in prison. And we can do it not only for other killer cops, but the corrupt mascots of this unjust system. And that has been your dispatch for this week. If you enjoyed this dispatch, please hit the like button and please share this out with as many people as you possibly can. Share it with some friends, share it with some enemies, share it with anybody that you think needs to hear content like this, needs to get educated about topics that they're, they might be woefully ignorant about. Uh, this, is, this is what content like this is out there for. And sharing is a big way to help independent media grow, find new listeners, find new viewers, uh, and, and all of that is done by, by you guys, the supporters of these shows. That uh, I've got my live virtual comedy shows back in action and the very last Friday of every single month. They happen at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are $10, and every month it's a brand new show covering a brand new sociopolitical topic that you won't hear on corporate mainstream networks. 
And as a bonus, uh, some months you might get to hear a weird, quirky story from me related to the topic of discussion, or there might be a special guest joining the show. These are musicians, storytellers, comedians, activists, so on and so forth. Uh, they they will be uh, kicking off the show uh, with a with a set at the at the top, and then it'll lead right into the socio political commentary. Uh, and look, if ten bucks is a is a little bit too expensive, I totally understand. Shoot me a message or an email, and I will make sure that you get a ticket to come check out the show via Zoom. Uh, secondly, if you want to uh, financially contribute to the show and you are on stable financial ground, you can do so at krishmohanhaha.com/donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com/donate. The biggest way you can help is by becoming a sustaining member, make monthly contributions, uh, which means that you get free tickets to the virtual comedy shows that I just talked about and the live ones when the live ones come back. Uh, you also get early access to a certain Forkful of Noodles videos. You get to ask me questions, which I'll then respond to either in live streams, uh, standalone videos, or as a segment on the virtual comedy shows that I do. And then those will be released as premium exclusive content just for the members. Uh, you get uh, addition, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content. So tons of things for becoming a uh, sustaining member. But if sustaining membership isn't in your cards, you can also make a one-time donation as well. And um, I have now included a statement of transparency, which lets you know exactly what you're contributing to um, and what you're helping me uh, uh, achieve, what goals you're helping me achieve by becoming a sustaining member, by, by, by getting me one step closer to making this my full-time job again. It, 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 be doing comedy full-time and creating content full-time was my full, uh, was my job full uh, pre-pandemic, but uh, because of the the way the world is now, um, I'm unable to do that without uh, without the do without donations from you guys, from the people. And lastly, I want to mention that I do have a online merch store. That's right, I've got uh, t-shirts, I've got mugs, hoodies, you name it, it's there, probably, kind of. Uh, but <laughs> it's available on my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, it's the merch tab, and uh, there, all of the designs have been made by me. There's seven designs uh, on the site right now, but that's due to probably go up. I'll probably make newer designs and release them as, as, as time goes on. Um, but there's a Julian Assange shirt that's available right now, and I'm going to donate 100% of all of the profits made from that shirt to pro-Assange um, groups and journalists and activists. Uh, people like Action for Assange, right? Uh, Kevin Gasola, Richard Medhurst, folks like that. Uh, I'm going to make my donations to them. Um, so, so if you want to help, um, you know, people that are covering Assange, uh, hit the spotlight a little bit more, then, then grab that shirt because I'm donating all of that to them. Uh, and last but not least, you can grab all of my stand up comedy albums directly off of my Bandcamp at krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. My albums are available for a pay what you want uh, price range on Bandcamp, but if you just want to listen to them and you don't want to, you know, have them take up room in your computer, I totally get it. Uh, you can also stream them off of Pandora. It's available on iTunes and uh, uh, Google Play. All of the all of the ways that you listen to music. Uh, with all that said and done, uh, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you guys for being regular listeners to the show. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to all the people that do donate regularly and have become sustaining members because uh, I wouldn't be able to continue doing this without you guys. So you guys really make this uh, possible. And I am very, very, very appreciative of that. 